Oh. Hey guys, this is Brad from Max Rarity. I have a special guest today. His name is Figment, a.k.a. Jared. Alright, what's up dreamers? Figment494 here, coming to you straight from your imagination. Just coming here to be, just chilling. What, what does that look for? What's that look for? Come on, Brad. Because you are ridiculous. I'm not ridiculous, you're cool. ridiculous. I am ridiculous. I right. accept that point. So, today we're going to be doing a discussion video regarding... We're going to be did... talking about cheating, because there have been some talks recently about some of the cheating that's been going on. A lot of the judges have been really cracking down on a lot of things, which I think is very good. I have been in a lot of different card communities. I've been in Magic, I've been in Yu-Gi-Oh, I've been in Vanguard, I've been in... Blah, 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 blah. Like, you name it, I've probably <laughs> played it at some point in time. Dra I'm playing Dragon Ball Super now, like, oh, okay. everything, right? So, one of the things that I like is that this community really, really goes for and is against cheating. And, like, is really good at, like, trying to make sure that cheating's not occurring. And one of the things that, obviously, some things have come to light recently, and some things have been just there... And what we kind of wanted to talk about is, like, kind of one of the things that you can kind of look at for how people, like, just to make sure that you're covering yourself. Make sure you're paying attention to things. And, like, I think there's two different types of cheating, honestly. And I don't even want to call it cheating, honestly. One of the things is, is literally pure accidents and mistakes. And then you just have flat out, like, yes, I have a card tucked up my sleeve kind of cheating. There, I think there are two different forms at that point. Well, I think there's and, also, yeah, like, so people can take advantage of people not paying attention. Yeah, well, there's that That would be flat out cheating in that, in that regard. But, like, one of the main things is, like, oh, I didn't under correctly understand what this card effect was. Or, man, I, uh, I just didn't do my math right that time. Like, especially now with cards like Buzzwool, Buzzwool Lycanroc being a popular deck in the format right now, well, you gotta count for strong energies, you've gotta count for weakness on certain Zoroarks, you've gotta count for choice bands, got Zor all these Regirocks, you got, like, all these different factors that play into the amount of damage being dealt on the opponent, and sometimes there are miscalculations, and maybe, I'm like, obviously that was, those are pure accidents, and I think that's one of the things you got to watch for, and I think that's I think that goes for any card game. Like this isn't applicable. We're not talking about just Pokemon here. It's just like anything in general. Just make sure you're watching your opponent, making sure like hand movements, no hands going under the table. Like I actually had an experience with cheating uh, against uh, an opponent last year actually at Roanoke for Pokemon Regional Championships. It was the last round. The winner made it into top eight. Top eight, and Somehow in the middle of my game, uh, my opponent had been shuffling my deck. Well, he was shuffling it in a manner like, so let's say this is the front of the table here. He just like has his deck and he's like, he just has my deck and he's just like cutting my deck to shuffle it. Well, he basically had it off the table and was shuffling it. Somehow during the game, a DCE ended up on the floor. So, and that DCE would have had the game for me and I would have made top eight, which would have been like, extra $750, and because I lost that game, I had lost another $250 and bubbled out top 16, like, there are certain things specifically about cheating, like, yeah, it's more prominent, I feel, on the higher stages of tournaments, especially once you make it into, like, re high level oh, regionals, yeah. where you're like, oh, this win is the difference between $750 to $1,000, and, like... Well, not only that, but, like, you also have to look at, like, for me, it's like, there are some people that literally don't think that they can win by, without cheating. Which, honestly, I think that's, I think that's when the, I actually will have some videos upcoming about that, and how to, like, up your playtesting abilities, and how to get better playtesting and whatnot. And that's why we're, that's why we're doing so like, our videos for playtesting, which, for our next series, you will see it on not only my channel, but you will also see it on Fixment's channel, because we are definitely all about sharing that and building each other up because we're good <laughs> friends no he has oh, he has actually has me chained in his room right now and you know Stop, I'm, I'm stuck to this uh, uh see like i can move my foot around and like those are my keys <laughs> thank okay, you so these are keys though these are keys <laughs> Tyler, he's chained up you're gonna get me in trouble people are gonna think i actually chain you up it's like no oh, number man. one no like <laughs> 
Oh, it's great. That's just horrible. But anyway, <laughs> so, like, there are a lot of things oh, that you really man. just have to, like, watch out for, like, mm-hmm. that you, you have to be really, really careful about that. Watching, like, uh, and, like, that was, a, that was my initial point. I kind of sidetracked from it. But, like, when you're watching your opponent shuffle your deck, if I can see, like, oh, this is my deck here, and I see my opponent shuffling it like this and looking at every single card, well, do you want me to shuffle it this way? It doesn't matter. No, no. It doesn't they matter. They can't really see it. Oh, okay, well, Go down more. sorry, jeez, it's not my fault you have the camera so far away. If I'm shuffling a deck, and, like, if my opponent's shuffling my deck like this, and I can see, oh, well, that's every single card in their deck being in front of them that they can see, so, like, oh, man, there's that Sycamore, that end that they need to get for the game right now. I'm going to make sure when I'm shuffling that, oh, I'm going to make sure that that card remains on the bottom, even, even after I cut their deck, that it stays on the bottom, that kind of right. thing. And, like, watching your opponent, seeing how... Their shuffling is important. Well, not only that, but, like, constantly mm-hmm. checking, like, hand size. Constantly checking graveyard size. You know. Like, they put they put cards back in their deck, you know. If they don't... If they just put them back, but don't really show you, like... And it's yeah. like a shuffle. Like, one of the big things is always... In case something happens, make sure you call a judge. Well, but yeah, also, like, it... don't be overzealous about calling judges, because... We, we don't need to be on a witch hunt for people who are demonizing people for cheating that yeah. aren't cheating. And also, another thing, too, like, and I've always been like this. I hate to be like, I, I don't want to be that guy who calls a judge and, bees, and is a rule shark. And we're not saying you have to do that. Because, honestly, by, I, I don't want to say rule sharking, but by helping your opponent, you're honestly helping your opponent by pointing out small blunders, like when drawing cards and like But, but small I think rule like sharking is also an issue. Yeah, I actually had a friend who, uh, this is actually from Memphis, since we're recording this shortly after, a couple days actually after, and I'm going to have a video up on my own channel doing a deck profile over my lovely god-awful deck that I ran. Um, yeah, like the small head non. Yeah, no, really. big head <laughs> they can't even The see horrible it. deck even. <laughs> it's so bad. But like, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, at Memphis, I had a friend who had played against a uh, player, I, I don't know names specifically, but like, Last round, every play that, that was, like, a small blunder or any, like, small mistake, like, ooh, I drew an extra card off a of Sycamore, like, we called a judge over, and they ended up tying their last round, which, for my friend, that was the winning end to top 64 and to potentially top 32, and I feel like rule sharking can get to the point sometimes to where if judges don't, if, because if it doesn't go over three minutes, the rule is that, oh, if it doesn't, if it's not a three-minute-long judge call, it doesn't get extended onto your playtime at the end. So, you've got to be vigilant in calling judges for things, but also make sure you're doing that to a healthy extent. I don't call them on every play, even unless it's obviously, if it's an important thing, like, yes, they just pulled a card out of his deck, like, obviously call for that. There, there's got to be, there's a happy medium in calling your opponent for the smaller things, but making sure they are also aware of said things so they can improve and for next time. And also, like, if you are calling a judge for specific rulings or questions or whatever, you also really have to, like, look at, well, so, some judges are going to make bad calls. They're, it's their opinion. You know, if you really have to, honestly, go to, go to the higher judge. Don't be scared to do that. Like, I had, I had a friend I who was... In a tournament, and he got a judge, judge, judge call on him. He, because he did Volcanian, the baby Volcanian, he took his prizes before putting energy on. Well, instead of the person calling the judge at that point, the person then drew a card, causing a game state, by drawing instead of calling a judge. So where the judge could say, just remove the energy. You don't get to do that this turn. Where... Using those to your advantage, where you can cause an irreparable game state, to then do that, mm-hmm. while it's not cheating, it's not really sportsmanlike. So, yeah. like, you really, really, really have to be careful about some of that stuff. Because, like, my friend ended up getting a game loss where, really, when it comes down to it, if that person caused an irreparable game state, why are they not getting game loss for it? Yeah. Like- kind of thing. So, like, it's just one of those where it's, like... Just be careful. Don't, you definitely don't want to, like, hurt yourself or your opponent. And don't be that guy that, like, you know, is the big rule shark. 
Yeah, and like, I, I feel like, again, we're talking about going into making sure there's the happy medium and being a, not being a rule shark, but also being making sure you and your opponent are on the same page. And, like, I've had this preached to me by multiple judges because <laughs> I'm not good at drawing cards, so, like, I'm sitting here and I'm playing, and I'm like, all right, uh, this is an old card, but, like, okay, like, uh, Sycamore. I draw my cards out of my deck, and, oh, I accidentally saw the eighth card. Now, like, obviously that's something minor, and I don't want to discourage you from calling a judge on that, but, uh, honestly, the ruling that I believe and that it should have been or how it should always be, is the eighth card is revealed, and it is shown to the opponent. So it is public knowledge to both player, and it's put back on top of the deck. And that's where calling it a judge on every play could harm you, because, okay, by me revealing that whatever card that was was on top there, you just took called a judge over, took two minutes of time that we're not going to be able to get back, and now we're going to tie at the end of the round due to that fact. And, well, it, th there have been some changes to some of those rules, because some of those rules now are, if you do that, it's a point penalty. Price penalty. Price penalty. What? <laughs> point penalty, price penalty, whatever. <laughs> Close enough. They're yeah, sitting somewhere. Uh -huh. It's a... It's whatever, right? Yeah, I, yeah. So, sure. like, one of the big things, like, that, you know, like, I get frustrated with is, like, I was playing against a guy who... I feel like it was turning into, like, a mini rant video. <laughs> he <laughs> was... <laughs> <laughs> who was a tournament or who like was a judge and it's like sure if you are a judge mm -hmm. congrats to you but you're not judging the tournament yeah. so like be careful of that and so that's going to be our video it did kind of turn into a mini rant yeah, i'm that's sorry what I'm I'm like all right <laughs> but uh yeah <laughs> we're just gonna go with that just gonna just gonna roll with that see how that works literally yeah. here do you want to pan up do you want to pan up this is literally what i've been doing while we've been playing this entire time all right i've just been sitting here just like play testing with metagross because he's ridiculous it's so good though it's so fun i love it all right well, well bye guys <laughs> thanks for watching as always share like subscribe do all that jazz you are all rarity rock stars and may your life see as max radius my decks have a great day